And um, this is our Wisdom and Wine, the Fine Art of Parenting Young Children YouTube series. We're part of Young Scholars Academy. Um, today we're going to talk about uh, finding appropriate consequences for children. Um, it's a pretty big concept, so everybody's going to introduce it and talk to you guys about it. I'm Miss Jen. I'm the director here at, at YSA. And I'm Kelsey, and I'm one of the lead pre-K floaters. So uh, thank you so much for watching. Always feel free to subscribe at the end of the video, leave your comments, as well as like the videos when you're done watching them. Thank you. So first we're going to talk about the differences between using consequences and using a punishment. Um, I think sometimes it those words can maybe seem like the same thing to a lot of people, um, but it's important, I think, to know um, that it can sometimes be better to use logical um, consequences that are relevant to the child, relevant to the situation, and not just punish them. Um, and punishment comes in, I think, when you're trying to um, power struggle almost, or it comes somewhere out of just wanting the child to know that they're wrong and you are right and they should do what you want them to do. Whereas consequences come from trying to teach the child how to be a uh, nice, respectful, logical person. Um, and as ECE educators, I think that's our main goal. So that's why I really like to use consequences and I don't try to ever really punish anybody. Yeah, you, you talk about power struggling. I mean, that's that's the best way. I mean, one, punishment punishment type things come out when you're frustrated, right? Mm -hmm, yeah. Um, that's when you're like, you're grounded for the rest of your life, you know? And they're like, yeah, right, you know, or, yeah. you know, whatever. Um, so consequences, natural consequences, that comes from Jim Fay mm -hmm. and the parent, uh, what is it? Um, parenting with love and logic, natural mm -hmm. consequences. Mm -hmm. um, super smart. It's like, you know, hey, if you don't, gosh if you uh, don't put on your shoes like you're gonna be cold when you go outside because right. we're leaving yeah. like mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> like reality yeah. that's a consequence uh -huh. whereas you know I'm gonna punish you and take away your you know tablet when we're in the car or whatever mm -hmm. it is they like well then you just made your life a living hell and theirs <laughs> yeah so it just doesn't work uh -huh. agree and I think it's hard for them to like connect the two things if the consequence or punishment doesn't match the crime so to speak right you know if it's like they're not cleaning up their toys so you I don't know make them go mop the floor or something <laughs> right. like that it doesn't make sense to them right. whereas if they're not cleaning up then okay you don't get to play with these toys anymore until, right. you know, or you lose them and you have to earn right. them back right. yeah. yeah yeah that I agree completely mm -hmm. so I think age appropriateness has a lot to do with it um, and and having it be relevant to the child. Um, if you want your child to pick up their toys, for example, or even in the classroom, and they're younger, they're only two, or I think even some younger threes may not sometimes always understand that concept of where the toys need to go, or, or I think it gets overwhelming if there's toys everywhere, you know, where, where do I begin, where do I start? So the parent or the teacher or whoever um, kind of helping, I think that knowing that that's okay Okay to yeah, help them. yeah. I, I, there's so many things you could go like yeah. on rabbit trails with that conversation right there. One, setting up the area. Do you know? Do you have pictures? Mm -hmm. um, have they been shown? Um, two, uh, this is a huge, huge opportunity to say, don't buy your kids too much stuff. Yeah. Like it literally overwhelms over. uh -huh. some children, yeah. and we're talking brain synapses and and brain development. And you know, to take a two-year-old and put, you know. 60 toys in their area and they go and do what two-year-olds do dump which is math you know um, pull out all their stuff and then require them to clean it up whether they've been shown or not you've got meltdown city I mean we've just set up a situation mm -hmm. where they're not going to be successful and you're going to be right. frustrated and they're going to be frustrated and here comes the battle yeah. you know so definitely setting up the area and definitely not overwhelming them um, sure helps. I know a lot of people have expectations that, you know, my kid's going to, you yeah. know, <clears throat> boy, I could write a book. Um, but, yeah, definitely show them what to do, show them how to do it, and know that not every time they're going to want to. I mean, sometimes we don't want to do the dishes. Right. I look at them and I'm yeah. like, eh, yeah. you know? So kids are yeah. the same way. Mm -hmm. They're just little humans. Mm -hmm. So I think completely. that's a good, like, circle of saying, of showing the difference between consequence and punishment because 
then I think it becomes a, a more of a punishment if you're not acknowledging that that they are human just like us you know they're exactly. not just little soldiers we can order around yeah but. yeah well, I mean that ties into social emotional too yeah. you know we, we expect kids sorry about the rabbit trail but this is really important to say but you know we expect kids to just be happy all the time and we expect them to listen and be good mm -hmm. and whatever and sometimes you wake up and you're like oh crap you know like you're in a rotten mood yeah. or you're you know sad or anything I mean we just have this expectation that our kids because there are kids are going to be you know either similar or, or, or just alike us um, and and they're not they're they're emotional beings just like us and we got to give them a break now I, I agree though to tie it back in <laughs> that consequences are key right. I mean it really is key I'm not saying go around and let your kid get away with murder mm -hmm. but understand that you know maybe if they didn't get enough sleep and they're in a cranky mood you might not want to pull out the paint right you know yeah. and then be upset with them when they don't want to clean it up mm -hmm. kind of thing responsibility now with um, discipline and um, it's really important that you as a parent kind of try to check yourself um, and where you're at mm -hmm. we've talked about different forms of punishment and discipline um, kind of off camera um, and kind of made us think about the fact that you can't truly effectively discipline your child if you're not trying to keep yourself in check that's when the punishment of you know you're grounded forever or you're never gonna eat food again or you know just the randomness or you know smacking somebody's hand or something that's when that's coming it's coming out out of frustration um, one of the biggest things I think with properly disciplining your kid is getting yourself in the right space I mean if they've just done something that triggers you and yes they absolutely know when they're very little how to trigger you they came from you they're aware um, sometimes it's important to give yourself a time out um, or a rest break so that you can actually logically look at it and not just react uh, yeah, or out of frustration, or out of you know exasperation, yeah. or any Despair. of that. Yeah, I mean you, you're tired. Yeah. You have little kids. And you're mm -hmm. tired, and sometimes your your cognitive thought process is just not right there, and yeah. so you can't properly teach somebody to think logically when right. you're not right. thinking logically. Right. So. And I think that benefits the child as well, because obviously you don't want to wait like a whole day or something to where oh, they. Oh yeah, forget, no, 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 you know? no. But like if you give them a little time. You know, it gives them time to re reflect on why they did that or where that's coming from, and then you also have more to talk about with them. Well, and, it, and you know, as they get older, I mean, you're, you're talking, frontal lobe is, what, eight by the time it's fully mm -hmm. developed, but as you're working towards that, it is really okay to tell your three-year-old, you have frustrated me to no end, I need to go sit on my bed, you go sit on your bed, you think about what happened and I'm going to think about what happened and then we're going to come together yeah. and try to figure this out yeah. because this isn't working for me, yeah. um, this is not going to be appropriate and it'll give them a little time to kind of defuse, mm -hmm. you to defuse and, and you know it'll teach them you know their own natural consequences, right. hey you know when I do this I might have to get rid of some of my toys right. you know I might have to do something like that and and so it's going to trigger that um, in their head especially if they're a part of it and I'm not saying like take my applesauce away because you know some kids will be like well my consequence should be that I shouldn't have to yeah. clean my room right. for the next year you know right. but real consequences and as they get older they'll get used to having that conversation and also I think it's really important as a parent letting them know that you have feelings too right. you have emotions right. too you screw up too right. Um, and that makes you more real and relatable to your kid. Because modeling that, um, how to deal with that emotion, I mean, is what their real takeaway lesson Absolutely. I think is. If your first instinct is to scream or to smack or something, you know, you're kind of reflecting that on them. Absolutely. And, you know, and so um, each kid is different, so I think there's a time and place for everything and, you know, each parenting yep. style and cultural backgrounds and whatnot. But um, I think just having that time you know think to yourself and then Absolutely. showing them that it's okay that I am mad it's okay that I made mom mad or you know right. I can take it a minute and we can figure it out yeah you know? we're gonna get over it mm -hmm. kind of thing I think it's important too that um, you know kind of having a, a, a parenting plan so to speak <laughs> yeah. um, with your uh, significant other because I can remember you know when I were really young they'd split us up 
you know, in disagreeing, and so we had to kind of like wonder <laughs> twin powers activate, you know, and be like, we're not going to discuss the discipline of our children in front of our children right. until we're ready to to discuss consequences. So that's important too. 